stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence to not only remember our troops serving our country overseas, but all those lost to COVID-19 and their families. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please have a seat. Notice requirements of the open public meeting law have been satisfied concerning the state of the Home News Tribune. The Star Ledger published a notice on December 20th, 2019. And it was an amended notice published on June 5th, 2020. Copy of the schedule was posted on the bulletin board. It should be so noted in the minutes of this meeting. Councilman Spiller. Here. Councilman Fakara. Councilwoman Meehan. Councilwoman Drum. Here. Councilman Patel. Councilman Anderson. Here. Councilman Bauer. Here. Vice President Small. Here. And President De Jesus. Here. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes from September 22nd? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Beginning with second reading ordinances, we will take letter A first. Ordinance amending Chapter 7 entitled Traffic to Revise Ordinance in the Township of Woodbridge, and this is with regards to the placement of a mid block crosswalk on Tappan Street in the Avenel section. Can I get a motion that this ordinance be taken up on second and third reading and the public hearing be opened? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from Council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. The public hearing is now open on letter A, letter A only. Hearing no comments from the public, can I get a motion that the public hearing be closed? The ordinance be adopted and submitted to the mayor for approval as required by law. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Letter B is an ordinance of the Municipal Council Township of Woodbridge adopting the Silver Oaks Redevelopment Plan. Can I get a motion that this ordinance be taken up on second and third reading and the public hearing be open? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Eyes have it. The public hearing is now open on letter B, letter B only. Madam President. Thank you. Your, your name, please, sir. Okay. Where you reside? Uh, Chris, Crystal, Middlesex County. I like to say the last time uh, you guys started my. We're party. only talking about the ordinance. Okay. Ordinance B. Ordinance B. I am against a Silver Oaks redevelopment plan to the local development and housing law. I just want to state that for the record, that I'm against it. And um, I don't know who these people are. Uh, it could be anybody. It could be like the owner of Silver Oaks develop, redevelopment. Could be Jack Morris. Could be one of Councilman Anderson's good friends, Jack Morris. We are only I talking about like Ordinance B. But like I said, we gotta we gotta find out who these people are that own these companies. Make sure there's no conflict of interest with the council members. And I, if I was a member of the public right now, I'd be against it. Uh, I'd be against it. You gotta find out what's going on in your community, and don't just allow them to blindly pass things without you knowing what it's about. I understand some people like to come in here and they like to talk what they want to talk about, but you should also be. I encourage everyone in here to do okay. what they have to with their uh, okay. oldies. Okay, thank you. Gang members it was noted. Powerful. You're against it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments regarding letter B, letter B only? Here are no other comments. Can I get a motion that the public hearing be closed? The ordinance be adopted and submitted to the mayor for approval as required by law. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Listed ordinances before you under first reading, C, D, E, and F. Can I get a motion that these four ordinances be passed on first reading, published in the Home News Tribune on October 9, 2020. Notice a public hearing to be held on October 20th, 2020 at 6 p.m. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Madam President, resolutions listed 1 through 23. I sent an add-on number 24. Can I get a motion to approve 1 through 24 by consent? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. 
Thank you. Thank you. We will now move to the public portion of the meeting. Please approach the microphone if you would like. State the area of the township you live in, and there is, a, along with your name, there is a one-time, five-minute time period. No one is allowed to speak from their seats. Watch your words, no curse words, because there are kids watching this program in order to do school projects. And no recording from your seats, only from the curtain area. So again, if you would like to speak, you have to go back there to the microphone. You have five minutes. It's a one-time five-minute time period. No comments from the public. No speaking from your seats. No curse words and no recording from your seats. We can proceed. You know, you have to go to the mic if you want to speak. May, may, I, approach, may I approach the microphone? The microphone. I state my name, so thank you. Um, and that's why you were both laughing about it because you guys know you can start my time. I like Chris smiling. Crystal, Middlesex County. Now you can start my time. I heard him click it real quick. It um, wasn't started so before last time either, sir. One thing, one thing I, one thing I just heard is, um, first of all, yes, people can curse. It's people's First Amendment right. The last time I was here, I'd like to say I rewatched the video and I noticed. The moment my time was done, I wasn't given a chance to walk away. The Woodbridge cops were already coming, like they were pre already ordered to kick me out. I don't like that. I'm happy Councilman Spillar showed up today because recently Councilman Anderson, he, he said a lie on Facebook. He lied that I called him the N word, even though I have a video proven I never called him the N word. I also have a screenshot in Councilman Anderson's own words. He claims that Councilman Spillar was behind him. So now that Councilman Spillar is here today, I would like to address Councilman Spillar, and I would like Councilman Spillar to say for the record, we, all know, it, we all know it never happened, but did Mr. Councilman Christoph, Anderson you, lie you that can, you were behind him, uh, Spillar? We you have like to go through the Council President. You can't ask any Council can members to Council speak. President, can you ask Councilman Spillar to answer? If I can't would, ask him to answer if he doesn't okay, want to answer. Okay, you know he why he doesn't to. want to answer? Because it would expose the Woodbridge Democrats are liars. None of these Woodbridge Democrats up here have the integrity to even call out Councilman Anderson for his lie that put a New Jersey resident's life at risk. Okay? Um, if I was Councilman Spiller, I'd say it right away. Ficar, the last time, Ficar, zero integrity. Ficar, he said he, his son's a police officer. He shouldn't even got involved, but at the end of the day, Councilman Anderson, I have uh, posts that you like. People on those posts say, off with the pigs. There's other posts that promote killing cops. You like these posts. I have proof that you like these postings. You've attacked military veterans, disabled people, and disabled military veterans. You should be ashamed of yourself. Um, I mean, how any of you can even just stand up there and not say anything. Now I understand why, how Jimmy Dabrowski, how he feels some of the times when, when he does come out. Even though Jimmy Dabrowski can be ridiculous at times, I mean, there are other times where he does make some good points. If maybe if he wasn't so ridiculous the way he acts, more people would listen to him and gravitate toward him, whatever, and I wish he stops acting like a radical a little bit. I think he, he would defend his community. Unlike that coward with zero integrity. Oh, and also Jimmy, Jimmy Dabrowski, please don't uh, stop uh, protecting politicians. You, you can't protect your community and defend politicians at the same time. It doesn't work that way, brother. So when people come in here to call out Councilman Anderson for wanting to put destroy Lincoln Annex School and put Hispanic kids on contaminated property where they can develop cancer, Jimmy Dabrowski, you have no right to tell me that because of Councilman Anderson's skin color, I shouldn't walk in here. That's what, that's what Jimmy Dabrowski says, because Councilman Anderson is the first black councilman in Woodbridge. We should, so Jimmy, I ask you this question. Mr. If uh, Councilman Anderson starts going anything, around cutting off people's heads in this community, president. I'm not gonna ask, I'm gonna ask a rhetorical, hypothetical question. If Councilman Anderson walks around this community raping women and cutting off people's heads, should we stay silent because, should Mr. we Christoph. stay silent because of the color of his skin? That is a legitimate hypothetical question. You cannot interrupt me. Lozman versus Riviera Beach Supreme Court ruling, you cannot interrupt me when I have the floor. I do have the floor right now and I will repeat it again. If Councilman Anderson was going around raping women and wanting to cut off people's heads, 
Should we not call him out for it because of the color of his skin? Um, because of this, what's going on? Um, I'm a Christian. I don't care Democrat. I don't care Republican. The way all you people are acting, pandering to your voters, and not coming out and calling out evil when evil should be called out, you should all be ashamed of yourselves. Here comes uh, Hoffman, uh, Congress, I believe he's a congressman. I just had to say that because you're, you're a, a celebrity in the area. I don't got nothing against you. Don't worry, Hoffman. I'm not here for you. I'm here for Anderson. And if Spillar had any integrity, he would come out and say, hey, I know Councilman Anderson said I was behind him. And I, uh, you know what? I was never behind him. And how could I hear you say something when I was never behind him and you never said it at all? But see, Spillar having zero integrity and loyalty to the Democratic Party, I know you uh, supposedly graduated from the police academy. If you had any integrity in your body, you would call him out that he put a New Jersey resident's life at risk. Screw the Democratic Party, screw the Republican Party, and start standing up for we the people. Start standing up for your constituents. Thank you. Your time is over. Thank you. Council President, I just want to clarify one point that um, Mr. Christos made. He makes a comment about um, a Facebook post that I liked, and I didn't know what he meant. So I just want to clarify that because he actually um, put it out on Facebook and someone shared it with me. I like the post that my fraternity brother um, wrote the proper and actual coverage of what really happened in Newark yesterday. Started peacefully, stayed peaceful, and ended peacefully. He was referring to the Black Lives Matter, uh, the Black Lives La Matter rally, p protest that they had, and that it was, it was peaceful. There was an article that was linked to, the, um, to, the, um, to his post, and in that article, it stated, from the beginning that it was a, the protest of George Floyd kill, killing sprung up in Newark, New Jersey as thousands vented, vented their rage after the unnamed black, uh, unarmed black man died while in police custody, custody in Minneapolis this week. While Floyd's, door, Floyd, uh, Floyd's death was sparked, vi um, sparked violence in Atlanta, Oakland, Detroit, Louisville, and Brooklyn, the New Jersey protests were peaceful. That was basically the beginning and the entire um, theme of that article was that it was a peaceful rally. It was a New York Post article, and however, in the New York Post article, like the media does, they, they put a, a picture that had a person with a mask, a red mask, and in the background there was a, there was a poster of someone that had a um, character that he was talking about, a, um, a, you know, a negative depiction of a police officer. That was way in the background. The article was a positive article about the fact that the um, rally in, in Newark was positive, and my friend's comment was that it was a positive rally. There was nothing about police or any, anybody getting hurt or anybody wishing ill will towards police. Mm -hmm. I have the utmost respect for police and always have. So that's all I wanted to comment. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public this evening? There are no other comments from the public. Can I get a motion that the public portion? Your name, please, and where you reside. James Dabrowski, Woodbridge Proper. Nothing prepared tonight. I spoke at length last night at our Human Rights Commission meeting, which I left a little after 11. I don't even know what time it ended. Um, didn't feel it was very productive. There was three officers here who, to their credit, came and listened, but didn't want to share their personal opinions, as the one officer stated. I think that's, then what's the point of coming if we're not here to share our personal opinions? I want to know where my police officers, my elected officials stand on these issues that affect all of us. You certainly know where I stand. I want to know where my son's teachers stand. I want to know where everybody stands. If you can, I said it last night, I'll say it again. If you can't say the words Black Lives Matter, I don't trust you. I don't. If you can't do the bare minimum and say that, Black Lives Matter, why should I trust you? That's the, the least you can do right now in this moment of racial reckoning, reckoning in our country. The largest racial justice movement our nation has ever seen. If you can't say those three words, 
I, I, I can only speak for myself, I don't trust you. And I'm sorry if that offends you, but you gotta, then you, maybe you gotta look in the mirror and do better. At our last meeting, um, I brought up Councilwoman Nancy Drum's Facebook page. There was a comment. Um, a gentleman said, our nation's flag matters. We should get that painted. And she replied to the gentleman, yes, I'm going to get that done. And the comments are shut down on the page now. Every other post she made, besides that September 6th post, comments are open. She shut the comments down on that page. Why? And then she says she can't recall it. She said, oh, I'll talk to him after. I don't recall doing that. I was here after the meeting. You didn't, if, if, I said, if somebody said something about me that wasn't true, I'd want to talk to them after the meeting to clarify. Um, oh, by the way, September 6th, there was a huge, the post was a huge American flag hanging from a crane. It, was, it seemed like me, support for the MAGA rally on the bridge. Why would you post a huge American flag hanging from a crane on the morning of September 6th unless it was to say, I approve of this MAGA rally happening on Woodbridge Avenue? Being led by a man who thinks blackface is okay, who says, stop the building of a mosque near Ground Zero, disgustingly Islamophobic, who was putting up flags wearing a shirt that said, just stand, as a racist middle finger to Colin Kaepernick, putting up anti-black Blue Lives Matter flags, Gadsden flags. This is who you want to align yourselves with? And the mayor just put up a post recently about a new project that gentleman was working on, the corrections officer in town near Moby Dick's on that little bridge, cleaning up leaves, putting up new flags. And, you know, the mayor is obviously on this gentleman's side. You'd think you want to distance yourself from somebody like this, whose wife was just suspended from her teaching job for supporting the blackface and holding the Blue Lives Matter flag with her middle finger up. I, my son goes to school in this township. I wouldn't want his teacher to support that. And there was somebody at the Board of Ed meeting last time who was defending her. I want to find out if that woman is still a teacher because I will not have my son in that woman's class. If you approve of racism, no way. So I'm giving you the opportunity to clarify, council, if, if I don't have to speak to the council president, if you want to ask Councilwoman Drum if she'd like to expand. No, thank you. Okay. Because you were pretty upset when I brought it up, and I see you have the same sentiments now. We don't like getting called out. Nobody does. But that's the only way we're going to learn and grow. And the way to deal with it is to acknowledge the mistake, apologize, and even better than apology is change behavior, doing better. That's what really says sorry. But to say our flag matters and not black lives matter, that's a slap in the face, and it's, it's disgusting. Just like blue lives matter, white lives matter, all lives matter, a slap in the face to black lives matter, it's disgusting. And shame on you if that's your response to Black Lives Matter, any of those three. Or Flags Lives Matter, an inanimate object, come on. Like that, a piece of cloth is more important to you than black people's lives? Come on. Like I said, I have nothing planned to say, but I'm going to take my full five minutes. I'm going to come here every time. I told you that. I usually prepare a statement, practice it. Tonight I didn't do that, last night I didn't do that. But I'm, gonna hear, I'm here, I'm gonna speak my heart and mind every time, whether you like it or not. Because my tax dollars pay you, pay for our police, pay for our teachers. I've been a member of this community all my life. And I'm gonna fight to make it better. And Reverend Donna Stewart, my friend right here, she said, when you do this work, be ready, you're gonna put a target on your back. When you do anti-racist work, Racists are going to be mad. And it's good. most of the people don't think they're racist. No, but none of us do. Myself included. I have racist blind spots. I was raised in a white supremacist society. I'm a white man. And I'm learning every day and trying to do better. Why can't we just look in the mirror and say, hey, we all got to do better? Instead of saying, I'm not racist. Sure we are. Come on. We all have it in us. And we all need to make that commitment to anti-racism to do better. Thank you. Thank you. No other comments. Once you have one time only on the mic and that's it. No rebuttal, no comments, nothing. You spoke, you got your shot, that's it. Any other comments this evening from the public? Sir? Uh, can I take off my mask? If you're going to speak, yes. Your name and town you reside in, please. Sure. Uh, my name is Gibran Abdullahi. I'm from Forrest. I'm with Woodbridge Youth for Liberation and Equity. Uh, my words are brief. We said from the start that this is a movement, not a moment. 
And if you were counting on us being a passing fad, if you were betting on things dying down with the temperatures, if you were calculating that we, especially the younger constituents of this movement, would stop showing up to these council meetings once school and work picked up, and that these meetings would go back to normal, realize you may have been mistaken. As you've learned by now, we can be quite persistent. Uh, we do not plan on going away anytime soon. For those of us who, are, who remain true to the cause are still here, and you do not simply stop fighting for something you believe in. And the implication is, despite all the progress that's been made, there remains an untold amount of unfinished business to attend to, and much has still not changed yet. Democracy is by nature said to be inefficient by design, but there is reason to believe that the lack of willingness of the council to fight for racial justice is more than a mere consequence of institutional design. But if you are hoping for an easy resolution, you will not find it. If this is a metaphorical staring contest, know that we will not blink. If the eyes are the window to the soul, we remain confident that our, right, that our cause is righteous and that we can easily see into yours. The logical response to institutional inaction is lawful disruption. Therefore, I forewarn you not to be surprised by what has happened or what has yet to happen with regards with, to civil disobedience. Let this be a foreshadowing. We will not be ignored. Are there any other comments from the public this evening? All right, cool. Uh, my name is Shaw, resident of Avenue. Uh, I just want to start off with a question for the council president. Yes or no question. Um, do you think the opinions shared by residents at council meetings are important to hear? I'm sorry, do I think what? The, the questions and the thoughts of uh, council, uh, a citizens at council meetings are important for us to know and hear? Yes. Okay, great. I agree. And so you can imagine the disappointment and shock I felt when the mayor told me, in addition to not attending council meetings, he doesn't even bother to listen to them. Now, in a town of over 100,000, I wouldn't expect him to know the thoughts of every citizen. Yet I have to question the community connection it seems our mayor has, or doesn't have, especially with minorities and young people. He admitted on the phone that he had no idea people in this town experienced racism until recently. That is concerning, considering he's been mayor for over 14 years. How can one best serve our community and all identities if he doesn't even know the problems that we face. And for someone to own up to their own ignorance, yet not even be willing to take steps forward such as engaging with the community through responding to emails, coming to council meetings or human rights commission meetings is a red flag for me. I don't care where your political affiliation is, that's not serving your community. He called himself the most successful mayor around, yet why has it been over four months since I saw him? Why did it take over four months for me to even get to talk to him? Now, he said something that's even more concerning, that the reason he didn't want to work with me or the rest of while was because he, he was briefed by someone at these meetings that I, Michelle Bannerman, called him a white racist. While I can't speak for anyone else, I most certainly never did. And that's a foolish thing to lie about when all meetings are literally being recorded. He said he would watch them and get back to me if I didn't say it. He still hasn't, and it's sad that someone in this town would go to such desperate lengths to try to vilify me, and that the mayor still hasn't apologized for that about a month now later. It's egregious to me that over four months, uh, we could have been working together over these last four months to our differences to make this town better had you not been operating on a false assumption of me. And I'd ask the person who incorrectly briefed me to step forward, but I know that they won't. But just know that lie held us from critical progress and high intentions even more in this town. But I guess when they can't effectively attack your message, they attack the messenger and lie on your name and your word. Lastly, our mayor said to me he refuses to ever say Black Lives Matter because he finds the movement absurd. The scary part is, I'm not shocked. This man has shown no indication he's willing to lean into his discomfort on race relations, and we deserve better than that. We as black residents deserve a mayor who thinks that we matter too. And to the rest of the council, I was disappointed to see essentially none of you has taken the initiative to self-educate yourself on things that have been, we've been speaking about for months, but I'm not shocked. You all talk about the Human Rights Commission being your way of action, yet I've only seen Councilman Fakara, who's not here, and Councilman Anderson at these meetings. Do you all not feel the need to come, at the very least, listen to these meetings? Please don't boast about this commission until you actually come in person and do the work that you were sworn in to do. At that meeting last night, when I tried to ask the officers about community relations and their acknowledgement of race's role in policing, the HRC tried to stop me, which again shows that this commission seems to have no teeth, and I wonder how actionable it will actually be if I can't even ask fair questions as a resident of this town. And I hope those officers there follow up with me and take the criticism and my suggestions seriously and don't just revert back into the corner, corner. Because last night showed me their department has major blind spots, especially in regards to internal affairs and race. 
And as a resident, I want to see them do better. I just hope for once this town can actually be open to accountability and change and not be so quick to stick to the status quo that is only working for some but failing others. And I'm glad the mayor finally realizes his nonstop propaganda of saying best town around is useless unless we actually take the steps to strive to be better in all facets. As I've made clear numerous times, even with numerous uh, obligations on my plate, I'm willing to do my part to foster positive change in this town. The question has been, still is, and still is, will those people in power, such as the mayor, council, police, board of ed, want to do their part as well? It remains to be seen. Nonetheless, I'm not here to debate or argue. At this point, you all, the mayor, the administration have shown where you stand and how you approach the situation and your blind spots that exist. And I'm afraid it isn't good enough. And as a result, the pressure needs to be amped back up until you all are outraged by injustice, exclusion, inequality, racism, bigotry, as we are. We literally stand in these chambers where someone came with a Confederate flag, and I did not see a single person stand up and say, that is racist or that is something that's harmful to black people. Not a single person. And that's something that I still want the council to address. And more at large, to take my last 10 seconds or so, I want better from each and every one of you. Saying our, our flags lives matter, but not saying black lives matter is disappointing to me. I don't even know you personally, but I expect better from you as an elected official on council, and I hope that you can take steps towards doing better. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public this evening? Any other comments from the public this evening? There are other, no other comments. Can I get a motion that the public comment portion be closed? Motion. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. The public portion of the meeting is now closed. Today is National Coaches Day, so I would like to recognize all of the individuals that volunteer their time to coaching through our sports programs in the schools, but also through all of our recreational programs. Um, my agenda is in order, but item number eight, I would like to acknowledge that Ross Street School 11, Principal Giordano, Guidance Counselor Amanda Atchison, and the staff for putting together a great program to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. They held a day in radio with on-air personality Ana Maria from La Fiesta 98.5. The children had, Zoom, had a Zoom tour of the radio station and a Q&A with Ana Maria, which aired live on the radio. Barron Art Center, number nine. The BAC celebrates Hispanic Heritage Month with a virtual lecture on iconic Mexican artist Frida Kahlo. This lecture will be live on October 7th, which is tomorrow, on the Township website, YouTube, and on the Barron Art Center Facebook page. Barron Art Center is also having their Woodbridge 13th Annual Fine Arts and Crafts Festival this Saturday, October 10th, from 12 to 4.30 at Alvin P. Williams Park in C. Warren. Please contact the Barron Art Center at 732-634-0413 for more information. For those who cannot attend the Barron Art Center um, Festival, there will be a virtual artist catalog available on Facebook, Instagram, and Township website. The catalog will be online for a year for your convenience. Please visit the site, shop, and support all participating artists. Item number 10, the Free Public Library of Woodbridge. The library is hosting virtual programs with Zoom. Upcoming programs include a Meet the Artist with Frank Palaya, who created the murals on the tunnel and the etchings on the waiting room at the Woodbridge Downtown um, New Jersey Transit Station on Thursday, October 8th at 7 p.m. and a visit with New Jersey ghost hunting author Laura Hoffman on Monday, October 19th at 7 p.m. Visit the library homepage at www woodbridgelibrary.org to register. All libraries will be open on Columbus Day. Call 732-634-4450, extension 5, for more information, or visit the web, web page for hours by location. That is all that I have. Council Vice President Small. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, number 12 on my agenda, National uh, Public Lands Day. I'd like to thank all the volunteers that uh, came out and worked so hard to to uh, clean up Woodbridge and plant some flowers. Uh, really came out nice, so thank you to all the volunteers. Uh, as a reminder, uh, number 15, the Jazz Fest is this Saturday, uh, October 10th, Avenel Performing Arts. It starts at, just lost my page, it starts at 3 p.m. and there's four bands, and we hope uh, we have a nice turnout. It's been going good the last few years, so again, the 10th, Saturday, 3 p.m., Avenel Performing Arts. Number 17 on my agenda is the Light Parade, uh, first annual. It's the Township Emergency Services, Fire, Police, EMS, 
OEM and CERT will have an opportunity to decorate their vehicles and we're going to have a parade through the whole township. I'm going to ask Mr. Haggard if we could post the uh, route on the township website, but every town in uh, Woodbridge, the parade, Woodbridge Township, the parade will go through and uh, it's going to be a fun night for all. That's all I have, uh, Madam President. Uh, just want to say God bless all our first responders and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Spiller. Thank you, Council President. Item number one on my agenda, Port Reading Day is this Saturday, October 10th. At the free event from 12 to 3. Rain Day is Sunday, October 11th. It's located at the Port Reading Firehouse on Port Reading Ave. This year, uh, we'll be honoring the 50th anniversary of the Port Reading First Aid Squad. Uh, there's food, refreshments, entertainment. So again, that is this Saturday, Rain Day is Sunday, 12 to 3 at Port Reading Firehouse. Uh, item number two, APAC is rocking and rolling with live shows and concerts now that they've opened up again. 25%, you can visit www.avenelarts.com and check out all the updated and added shows. Uh, item number eight, Avenel Fire Department announced back in September, uh, with this week being Fire Prevention Week, we're still planning on having an outdoor event for our annual open house at the Avenel Fire Department after discussing with the committee, Fire Prevention, and the Board of Fire Commissioners. We just felt it was in everybody's best interest to cancel this year's uh, open house. Uh, we can do our best to adhere to all pandemic guidelines, but it's still early and we don't want anyone running the risk of getting sick. Uh, just a reminder, this year's fire prevention theme is serve up fire safety in the kitchen. Uh, that's all for my agenda this evening, Council President. Just a couple of announcements. I'd like to thank the mayor, the administration, engineering, and police for installing a new mid-block crosswalk on Tappan Street. It uh, feeds both sides of Peltzman Park. Uh, so thank you for that. Peltzman Park is, uh, gets a lot of activity between the basketball courts, the exercise equipment, and the playground equipment, the tennis courts. So. Um, thank you for that. Good luck to all our township students next week. Uh, as they return to our Wilbur schools, please, please be mindful of the children that uh, walk to and from school. And with the buses on the road, please be careful while driving around our town. Uh, just thank you to all emergency responders, fire, EMS, our Wilbur Police Department, OEM, and CERT for all their tire tireless work. I just want to uh, announce I want to congratulate Anthony Police of Port Reading. The young 18 year old just was awarded his Eagle Scout. Um, award which is fantastic so he was presented with his um, council and mayor proclamation so congratulations to anthony and Port uh be smart be safe god bless america thank you council president thank you councilwoman drum thank you council president before i get into my agenda items i just wanted to acknowledge the gentleman from avenel Rashad. just so you know for the record um i have not been able to make some of those meetings because of scheduling conflicts i have had many meetings with the human rights commission already uh, in person and by phone in an attempt to gain some knowledge and education. So I do care, um, we all care, and I'm just trying to do my part in educating myself and stepping up and you know, trying to evaluate the situation. Number one, Relay for Life, we have painted the line on Main Street pink in recognition of Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I'd like to take this time to publicly thank our Woodbridge Relay for Life Committee for their tremendous fundraising events and efforts, even through COVID, to help find a cure for cancer. This month is intended to educate people about the importance of early screening and testing. There is plenty of resources available for breast health awareness. Please take the time to do so this month especially. The Fishing Derby, the Frank Gagnon Memorial Fishing Derby was held this past Saturday at the Woodbridge Park on North Park Drive. This free event was well attended and I wanted to thank our public works and our recreation departments for all that they did to make this happen during the pandemic for many families. They had a lot of fun and they come every year. Even though it was social distance and marked out, we were able to accommodate many families in our town. Number two, the Downtown Merchants Association held their sixth live Facebook interview today with Scott Reciser, who's the owner of Chicken Galore. It was a great interview, learning about Scott's family business passed down from his dad over 50 years ago. Woodbridge is proud of this business and its longevity here in our town and wish them continued success. Number four, the Chamber of Commerce had their annual golf outing, the 56th yesterday at Colonia Country Club. With the help of our sponsors and golfers, it was a success. Thank you to Elizabeth Gass, Columbia Bank, Bayshore Recycling, and Main Street Cigars, and the gift raffle donations, and all of our volunteers truly are very appreciated and made it very successful. The next Chamber Networking event is on Thursday, November 5th, at the Woodbridge Elks. It is a wine tasting from 6 to 8.30. 
There will be craft making, bingo, and raffle baskets. Tickets are limited due to proper indoor social distancing, so please call the chamber to get your tickets. Haunted History Productions and our Recreation Department will be hosting the Ghost Walk this year, this Saturday, October 10th, from 6.15 to 9 p.m. at Tansman Park on Pearl Street, Woodbridge proper, across from the train station. Tours depart every 15 minutes in small groups. Tickets are cash only at the door. Advanced tickets are suggested for parties of six or more by calling 908-707-2026. All walkers are $10 for a 50-minute guided tour into a spirit-filled pass. Stroller babies are free and no dogs are allowed and all attendees are required to wear masks. Please be mindful of the changes and the traffic ordinances in and around Green Street and Roway Avenue due to the construction. I wanted to thank our police department and administration for editing our current ordinances and placing these protections for our pedestrian and vehicular traffic by keeping them out of harm's way around and during these construction sites. And I'd also like to ask Director Green if he had a few minutes briefly after this meeting if I could talk to you about a situation. Thank you. That's all I have, Council President. Thank you, Councilwoman Drum. Councilman Anderson. Thank you, Council President. Um, the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office is host hosting a clothing drive to benefit the men and women re-entering the workforce. Lightly used clothing items as well as toiletries and hygiene products will be collected between October 26th and October 29th. The location is at the Prosecutor's Office on the second floor, Office of the Clerk um, and County Administration on the first floor. Um, the Director's Office, uh, Department of Public Safety, and the Health and Fire Academy in Saraville are all collecting between October 26th and October 29th. If you have any questions, you can email them to amber.gibbs, G-I-B-B-S, at co.middlesex.nj.us. Go to my item number one, WTYRC. Um, Philip.claremont at township at twpwoodbridge.nj.us. So Philip Claremont um, is offering strength and uh, agility clinics for all, um, all ages at the club in Woodbridge. Um, this past week he's been doing a um, club for the Woodbridge Broncos. So again, you can, if you want to um, book some time with Mr. Claremont, it's Philip with two L's, dot Claremont, C-L-E-R-M-O-N-T at TWP dot woodbridge dot nj dot us he's actually he's great with his clients and right now he's working with the youth uh, on strength and conditioning the job bank uh, number two middlesex county central jersey drive-through job fair yes a drive-through job fair is being held october 15th from 10 a.m to 1 p.m the location is at the grand marquee parking lot 1550 route 9 in old bridge new jersey so this is for a free and a safe way to search for jobs. There's no registration that's required. All that they ask is that you wear a mask. The staff will wear a mask and gloves. Bring your resume and it will be contact, it will be collected for a job database. After October 9th, um, check with uh, MiddlesexCountyNJ.gov for a list of the participating employers. Um, that you can go on that website um, there's a, a number of them on there now um, and uh, for more information you can e email businessinfo at co.middlesex.nj.us uh, also on the uh, area of the jobs um, the Mill, Mill Creek is looking for administration uh, administrative assistant FedEx is hiring right now Duke Realty is looking for uh, businesses that are interested in bidding in various trades for a new contractor, um, a new construction that's going to happen in uh, Avenel. Um, public employ uh, Employment Fairs is also listed on there. Please take a look on there um, under Public Employment Fairs. I'm going to hold on item number three. Um, the Hall of Fame, number four, is going to schedule their next meeting for the spring of 2021 and we're in hopes that we're going to have the um, we were originally hoping to have it in the spring of 2021 but we're going to put postpone it until 
um, fall of 2021 um, due to COVID. Putting the Taste of Woodbridge on hold. Uh, the charity raffle, um, they will be doing the drawing um, on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And um, the tickets are being made as we speak and uh, they will be ready for our youth, or all of our volunteer organizations that are looking to, to uh, raise money. It's a great rate, way to raise money and it's for a very good cause. So please hang on to details. We'll make sure that we get those details out to you regarding the Woodbridge Charity Raffle, which happens annually. I'm gonna hold on the drive-in movie due to its cancellation. The NAACP's next meeting is October 19th, which is the third Monday of the month at 7 p.m. and that's at 1 Olive Street in Perth Amboy. And as you, you may already know, Perth Amboy branch covers Woodbridge, South Amboy, Carteret, uh, Saraville and I think that's it, right? Woodbridge, yes, that's it. Um, I'm going to hold on the MLK event, but Mr. Haggerty, I'll, I'll probably send you an email about that tonight um, with some some suggestions. I'm going to hold on number ten and twelve and ten and eleven, and uh, Mr. Uh, Councilman Spiller already mentioned Anthony Police. I would like to uh, congratulate him and his his family. Um, hold on. 13, Middlesex College. Um, as we mentioned uh, at the last meeting, um, Middlesex College uh, has changed their name. They're no longer known as Middlesex County College, uh, but they recently recognized Dorothy Powers, who is a board member. She's presently the chair of, uh, of the Middlesex County Board of Trustees. She's a former freeholder, and she received the Lahamadu Award, which is the highest uh, achievement for um, the, uh, for Middlesex College. Uh, Speaker Kaufman was a past awardee of it. And uh, also for any updates, I'd like you to uh, check up www.middlesexcc.edu. Uh, for 15, the WONAC, uh, the Woodbridge Organization of Neighbors Advocating Change. Um, many of them attended last night's um, Human Rights Commission. I'd like to thank Mr. Mitch and also officers uh, Barrett, Brady, and Kuzma uh, for being here, um, fielding a lot of difficult questions and, um, and staying the entire time and um, agreeing to, to work with the, uh, the members of the uh, Human Rights Commission and also members of the community that asked them to meet at later dates so that they could get further dialogue. It was a first step and I think that that's important about getting that first step. Um, and, and finally, I would like to acknowledge TV35 for last week for their Facebook Live. It went over very, very well. Uh, for the JFK Cranford, I wish the outcome was a little bit better for JFK, um, but we should be there this Friday for the big Woodbridge Colonia game. Um, so that's always a great rivalry for many years. It was a Thanksgiving Day game, but um, it's going to be a hot ticket. You better adopt a kid or something because the only way you're going to be able to get a ticket is if you're related to somebody. Um, but uh, if you can't get to the game, you can watch it on Facebook Live for TV35. It's a great way to come out and support the, uh, support the young man. Hit, hit the like button as much as you can. Okay? Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilman Bauer. Thank you, Council President. My agenda is in order. I have a few announcements. This week is National Fire Prevention Week. Due to COVID-19, Ford's Fire Company's annual fire prevention open house is canceled this year. If you're looking for fire safety tips, please visit the National Safety Council or the American Red Cross websites. Also, this year, as New Jersey continues to respond to ongoing transmissions of COVID-19 in our communities, recommendations for adapting traditional celebrations and considerations for ways to celebrate Halloween safely are listed on the New Jersey Department of Health website. Please visit this website for your guidance this year. That's all I have. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Mr. Mitch? Thank you, Madam President. Under 1B, I'm noting that from the agenda this evening as you uh, just approved the liquor license transfer to Jersey Pizza Boys Bar and Grill. Number two, I continue to work with the prosecutor on preparing charges against another licensee. I'll be in touch with you when I have uh, other preliminary information uh, to share with you. Number five, under elections, just a general reminder by this point, Everyone who is an active registered voter should have received their mail-in ballot. Reminder that you can drop the ballot here at Town Hall at the drop box at the front stairs. Or, of course, if they have any questions, they can call the clerk's office uh, and get that information through the website. There's also a 
a useful uh, quick video on the website as well, how to complete the ballot as far as uh, within the proper envelopes. Uh, number seven, just a comment on the census. As you know, the, the date changed again, the moving date, but I think this is it. October 31st will be the last October opportunity 31st. for people to uh, register under the census. So I encourage everybody to please do so. And a reminder, uh, we'll be having a Board of Health meeting as well tonight after the administration's agenda. Thank you. Uh, re, el censo 2020 ahora tienen hasta octubre 31 para llenar el formulario, así que les recomendamos a todos que por favor llenen su formulario del censo 2020. La fecha es octubre 31. Gracias. Um, Business Administrator Maluka. Thank you, Council President. Uh, under administration, I have a refund for tax overpayment. I have a parking uh, permit refund. I have a sustainable Jersey grant application. A, under police, I have a traffic ordinance amendment. Uh, under planning and development, I have a refund for developer for developers re, refund a re, review fund. Excuse me, and an ordinance for a removal of parking permits from Freeman Street between Church and Greco Lane. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Legal. Nothing to see with Council President. Can I get a motion that no. we go directly? Oh, oh sorry. go right ahead, sir. Oh. I was going to indicate yes. that we go directly. Director Green was here for the health report. Thank you. Motion. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, ayes have it. Mr. Green. Um, that's a free rabies clinic. Our next one will be in February. So keep your eye out for that if you're still looking for that. Um, Mayor's Annual Health Expo number 7, the Mayor's Annual Health Expo will be held on the 17th of October. It's always the third Saturday, Saturday in October. It will be outside. All COVID guidelines will be in place, so we encourage everyone to attend. Last but not least is number 8, our COVID response. I want to thank the Mayor for regularly reporting all our COVID activity in the community since, um, since we began. I believe this is uh, very important and help keeps the, the public vigilant about the threat of COVID-19. I would also like to highlight that the nurses continue to respond to the new COVID cases within 24 hours. Um, even on weekends and holidays to date, they have responded to 2,998 cases. 2,119 have been community cases. The contact tracers are also successfully initiating outreach to contacts within 24 hours of notification. Contact tracers also work weekends and holidays as needed. Our rate of participation from contacts has been very strong and higher than the statewide average. And I owe that to the hard work of the nurses and the contact tracers. Lastly, I want to remind everyone to please follow all those precautionary measures of social distancing, mask wearing, hand hygiene, and stay home when you're sick, and follow the isolation and quarantine order when required. Thank you, Council. That's all I have tonight. Thank you. Any questions from Council for Mr. Green? Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion. Second. All favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Meeting adjourned. Yeah.